Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 69 of our trek and yesterday we looked at the six essential components for a rich and satisfying life and realized that it is the simple and the small things of life that make the real difference. Speaking of small things, today we will look at what we should do when we get a pebble in our hiking boots. We are recording our podcast from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. When this podcast is originally aired, we will have about 30 family members joining us for the weekend. It's always a great time of fellowship and fun. Although the Big House is always in some state of renovations, we did get most of the rooms back in livable order for the weekend, as we will be having all six bedrooms occupied. Everything will fall into place as it should and as it always does. We will now shift our focus to our trek today. We want to learn why it is the small details that we need to take care of when they occur to prevent them from turning into major details. When we hike through the rough mountainous trails of life, it is very important that we have our proper boots or shoes on for the type of trek that we are taking. We need to make sure that they fit correctly and are laced up snugly. Boots and other types of shoes have always played a role in history and culture. Everyone knows the story of Cinderella and the glass slippers, or the tale of Puss in Boots, and remember Dorothy's magic ruby shoes in The Wizard of Oz. Language is littered with references to shoes. We wait for the other shoe to drop, or we experience life in another person's shoes. One has big shoes to fill when he has to take on a new challenge. And there's that phrase, if the shoe fits, wear it. Shoe design can also indicate a person's wealth or social position, as reflected in the quality of the material or the complexity of workmanship used to make those shoes. Shoes can show memberships in a particular group, like cowboy boots or motorcycle boots. High heels can make a social statement, as do a sensible pair of Oxfords. Celebrities are known for the number of pairs that they own. And for me, my favorite pair of shoes is my Birkenstock Super Noppy Sandals. They have small nubs on them, and they massage my feet all day long. Since I use a standing desk at all times, I find myself on my feet for 10 to 12 hours each day, and these sandals are the only shoes that allow me to do so comfortably. My mom got me hooked on these when I was in my early adult life, after she had purchased a pair, and I tried them out for myself. What one does with shoes also makes a statement. Mine is for comfort, but in Middle Eastern countries, for example, throwing shoes at someone is an insult. Wearing the correct shoes or boots for the situation or occasion is important. This is especially true if you are hiking through rough, rugged terrain over many miles. Even when you do have the correct boots and make the proper preparations, you can still get small pebbles in your hiking boots. At first, this may not be noticeable, nor present any type of issues. But let's look how a small, seemingly insignificant issues in life can create major problems. The following parable should help you to understand. A man was hiking on a steep mountain the other day when a tiny pebble about the size of a grape nut kicked in and landed in the heel of his boot. At first, it was barely noticeable, so he kept going. Then it began to be more and more noticeable and started hurting bad until eventually... The pain subsided, and his heel went numb. When he got home from the hike, his heel was bleeding, and it took a while for his foot to recover. In fact, for the next several weeks, whenever he hiked, it reopened. If he would have just stopped and taken the pebble out right away, it would not have happened. And how often do we do this with our lives? Something that seems like not so big a deal we let stay. Then it becomes bigger and bigger, and it brings pain and causes problems down through time, even after it has been removed. So today we want to look at the following three steps that we can take to avoid needless pain in our lives. Number one, stop what you are doing. The first thing you need to do when you realize there is a pebble is to stop. We are all busy. Stopping can feel like such a huge task at times. If we stop, people may realize there's something wrong. We get in a rhythm of life and we don't want to slow down. Before big failures or meltdowns, we start to exhibit actions that are uncharacteristic of what we would do normally. You need to know yourself well enough to stop and ask yourself these three questions. Am I worn out and not getting enough sleep? Am I eating properly? Am I getting the proper exercise? These three areas contribute to most of our irrational actions. If you are worn out or out of balance in some of the other areas, stop before you do something stupid and look for these triggers in your own life. The other areas where we may become irrational or not ourselves is when we become involved with something that is illegal, immoral, or unethical. As a Christ follower, I refer to these items as sinful actions. If this is something that you've allowed in your life, without being too blunt, I will just say it. Just stop it. Free yourself from these pebbles that are destroying your life. Number two step is to remove the pebbles. 
Once you determine that there are pebbles in your life, you must remove them. If it is a lack of sleep, then work at getting more sleep, even if it's just another 30 minutes at first. If you're not eating right, then slowly start changing those habits. And if it is a lack of exercise, then start walking an additional 30 minutes each day. Also, it may be times where you need to apologize to anyone that you've hurt or offended when these pebbles manifest themselves. Now, if these pebbles are from sinful actions, then remove them by making the needed changes in your life to free yourself from these actions. As a Christian, this is through confessions. In 1 John 1, 9 says, But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Confess and repent to God first, then as needed, confess and ask forgiveness of others. As James 5, 16 states, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Confide in your spouse or a close friend and allow them to help you through this journey. This is so healthy and needed. In either of these types of situations, remove the pebble before it starts to fester into an open, raw, and gaping womb that hurts you and others. And the third step is to keep moving forward. Once you've removed this pebble, change habits, stop actions, and confess if needed, and then continue on your trek. There is no glory with God or people if you wallow in the pigsty of misery. The Bible says that Jesus died for our sins, and it is finished. He knew what we were going to do before we even did it, and He died for it. If you need to change your habits, change them, and then move on. If you screwed up, don't fixate on it. Continue without the pebble. The scariest part about these pebbles, there becomes a point at which we don't feel them anymore. It is then that they start causing damage, but we don't feel it. Our heart has become callous to God and to others. And I pray for two things for you today, that you would feel God's love for you and that he would keep your heart soft so that you would detect and remove these pebbles in your life. Be blessed on your journey each day. Well, that'll finish our podcast for today. If you missed any of the previous podcasts, please check out Wisdom Trek on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or at wisdom-trek.com. Tomorrow we will discover why actions and affirmations must always hike together. So please join us at our camp tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you enjoy our daily doses of wisdom, these little nuggets that we consume, I encourage you to take time to invest in yourself in the following three ways. Invest with your time in improving Wisdom Trek by leaving your name, email address, and a comment on our website so that we can provide you with wisdom and insights that best fit your needs. Number two, invest in yourself by listening to your seven minutes of wisdom through Wisdom Trek each day. The best way to do this is to subscribe at iTunes or Stitcher so that it's downloaded to your iPhone automatically each day. And number three, invest in the lives of others by sharing with your family and friends, either in person or online, to join us on our Wisdom Trek. You can also do this by leaving a rating at iTunes or Stitcher so that we gain more exposure and more people will join us on our Wisdom Trek. The journal from today's podcast can be found at wisdom-trek.com, where we also have pictures, tweetable quotes, wisdom nuggets, and free resources. Thank you for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, and most of all, your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and to create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.